Check out the Comic Outlaw on YouTube. Jack Slater, aka the Comic Outlaw, coming through with Star Wars, Vader, and the Lost Command. Dun dun dun. Attack positions. Yes, this is part two of Vader's continuing story eight months after Anakin gave his soul to the dark side was injured by Ben Kenobi and became Vader. Aboard his ship, they begin dissecting some of the alien race of soldiers they come across that spoke no basic that Vader slaughtered earlier on. The fascinating thing about the examination is they have no hearts. Their lungs work differently. Their bodies are a complete mystery. Lady Shuru reveals that their hearts are in their hands and feet. A very interesting species. Vader quickly dissects them like a science project, interested in them, wanting to see the suffering on their faces. Vader makes it clear who's in charge, but the lady does have her terms. She does want to be held regent of this planet, which is good because you always need a regent in every part of the empire, someone that will follow direction someone that will bend the knee to the dark side and maybe just maybe this lady has the power to hold on to this region but Vader will test that as he's testing other people as the examination continues one of his commanders shell dares to question Vader but he reminds him that if he does not succeed in his mission Tarkin will ruin him and Vader says that he will meditate on that Shell has made himself a powerful, powerful enemy, and he'll come to regret that. But in the meanwhile, Vader drifts into what's left of Anakin's soul as he begins to see dreams of Padme, their son, and him happy with her, defeated everyone, and now has it all. And she, not he, is leading the new Republic and everyone loves them he is at peace but every Sith knows that peace is a lie and in this dream the dark side reminds him of that and he wakes up from his metallic coffin wham and he slowly whispers her name at me Vader is being tormented because Anakin still remains inside of him. Meanwhile, in a biological research center inside the um, Star Destroyer, they do collect plants for biological weapons and such. Vader decides to meet her here and he goes through and explains that he is in charge and that he will do what she asks and she gives him the location of the ship. Tarkin's son's ship. A shattered Star Destroyer just drifting out in space. Vader and his men approach cautiously, carefully, looking around. But one of the soldiers determined that it was exploded from the inside, it was sabotaged. Someone had sabotaged the ship from the inside. There was a traitor in the Empire. From out of nowhere, though, these ships come attacking. They were hiding in the debris, waiting to ambush whoever decided or whoever was foolish enough to come looking for Tarkin's son. Vader begins his maneuvers. Now, Vader is an accomplished pilot. Vader feels comfortable in a ship. And Vader knows how to destroy. He knows how to strategize. He's had years of combat training. And he just decimates them all, him and his men. But Vader, as always, needs one alive. He needs one that he can pump for information. And as they go through the maneuvers, he finds that his ships are faster, so they start maneuvering through the junk and the debris so these ships will get caught up in it. And one by one they fall until there's that one ship left. The one ship that Vader needs, and he pursues it alone. And as he chases after them, he could feel their fear. He can feel it as he comes crashing into their ship. 
he, they know what their fate is going to be. They could tell by his presence of the dark, dark lord. As he clings and clangs with his ship and then crashes them both inside the Star Destroyer. And where they feel panic, Vader only feels power. As they crash land, the two pilots look around, disheveled, worried, knowing what's coming for them, the shadow and the darkness, the dark shadow of the Sith. And as they ready their weapons, hoping to get a lucky shot. This dark, evil lord comes out of nowhere and slices one of them, strikes him down, and grabs the other one. For like he said before, he only needs one, and he will make him confess. For that is the way of the dark side. As he tells his master what is going on, he explains that there's a traitor and that it may be Tarkin's son. But Tarkin is a loyal ally, powerful in the way he spreads fear. He's needed, and the Emperor will not give him up. So Vader suggests, what if he's killed during the rescue and that he never makes it back? That would solidify Tarkin's hate, his anger, and make him a more loyal servant to the dark side and to the Emperor, so they hatch a plan. Invader appears in the war room, tells his commander that he's going out on his own, on a stealth mission. And what lies in wait for Vader? What will happen? Will his mission succeed? Find out the next time, and I will catch you on the flip side. Laters.